Hello, you multi maniacal McAllen mockers. Oh, controversial, won't mention that one, but I'm going with it anyway. And thank you to Mike Addison Sape for providing that malt mention, introducing Ralphie Review 986 Extras. And the X for Extras means I'm providing additional content over and above a conventional whiskey review. Because this channel at ralphie.com is all about whiskey reviews and the reviews of other quality spirits. And at the moment, I'm engaged in a world tour series. It's the first time I've done this in 14 years as a channel, is to have a world tour of a number of whiskies from different countries that are not Scotland, so as to make you aware of them and give you an insight and a point of reference should you start to notice these whiskies in a shop near you. And in particular, if they're at a good price, because people don't know what they are, they don't really take much of an interest and therefore the retailer might not be charging too much money for them. Hmm. Now I do suspect though when it comes to Irish whisky, such is the positivity of the Irish reputation around the world and the familiarity that people have with what's called Irish whisky, that's whisky spelt with an E, that uh, in fact there won't be many discounts on the on the shelves in these shops, but there will be more and more interesting Irish whiskies to be found. And uh, when we are exploring all the options, you see, we find ourselves moving away from the standard bottlings of spirits that we started with in the good old days, you know the good old days, back when we started and had our first sip of a, a good quality spirit, whether it be rum, bourbon or, or whiskey. And then we just basically said, you know, I'm not adding any Coca-Cola to that or ginger beer. I'm not going to add any Red Bull. <laughs> I'm just going to have a wee drop of water in it and actually taste the spirit. And that's great because we've got to start somewhere and we want to start in a safe space. And that safe space is spirits bottled at 40 percent. They're very accessible. You don't have to have all go through the, the ringer wondering how much water you want to add to release the flavours so that you can appreciate them because the dilution's already been done for you. However, as time goes on, we start to experience the higher strength whiskies. In the, oh, excuse me, we've got incoming, incoming. Hello, you big, hello, you big bully. You leaving the birds alone? Come here. Oh, oh. Yeah, meow, 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 meow. It's Billy the cat. Hi, Billy. Oh, I'm just doing a whiskey review, mate. Do you want to join in? Is there, do you have an opinion on whiskey at all? Right, too. It's not a mouse review channel, right? And it's not a, a cat food review channel, so you might not be interested. Yeah, I thought so. Anyway, we sip a whiskey before we go any further. Hmm, very nice. I've just reviewed this. And it's getting bigger and better in the glass as time goes on. Because I never rush a whiskey. Especially a good quality whiskey which has been bottled for integrity. So we're not looking at 40% whiskies. They're competent enough. Give them their place. It's a great place to start. But as time goes on, we're looking at whiskey bottled at 43%, 46%. Because at 46%, if it's a pot still, double distilled whiskey that's not been chill filtered, then you're going to get that mist that appears in the glass, which will automatically improve the quality of whatever's been made and whatever cask it's been in. Every single time. So when somebody tells you that, non, that chill filtration doesn't do any harm to a whiskey and you'll hardly even notice, they are flanneling you, they are misdirecting you, they are misleading you, and they are basically trying to pump the orthodoxy so as to dumb down your knowledge and your ability to enjoy whiskey. Do not listen to them. 
chill filtration has a significant influence in whiskey. That influence varies, but it does affect the experience and we're paying a premium for the experience and therefore we want our experience to have a premium aspect to it. So this is why we're kind of moving on to higher strength whiskies, and we explore the independent bottlers who tend to bottle generally at higher strength, more naturally presented with natural colour so they're not dosing it with, with fake tan to compensate for the fact that the poor whisky never got much natural colour from the cask because it never got much of anything from the cask half the time. Just, just as an opinion, just in perspective, it's why you're watching the channel. Because you know I'll tell you the way it is. Because I'm just telling you my experience. My experience tells me that when you've got a higher strength whiskey, 46% and any higher, in particular um, cask strength whiskies, anything 50% and above, you really want to be adding water. Because at that point, the volume of ethanol, the alcohol, that's in the liquor, that's holding and locking up the flavour. If you sip it neat, you will only get a fraction of this experience of smell and taste that you should be getting. For a very simple reason, the alcohol, due to its strength, is locking up the flavours. When the alcohol is dilute, and not just with your saliva, that's the start, but your saliva is viscous, and therefore it is relatively ineffective. And then what happens when you've got high strength alcohol, it nips your senses, it dulls your palate, and it stifles your ability to actually taste the dynamics of the liquor that you're drinking. That's what happens. But something worse happens than that, that you really, really need to know about. And not a lot of people mention, with your cask strength whiskies, if you are constantly drinking them neat, you significantly raise the risk of getting throat cancer. Yes, not very nice. And you're wondering, Ralphie, how's that? Ralphie, please explain. I'm glad you asked me that. I shall explain. Because high strength alcohol is a concentration of solvent in the form of ethanol. And when it gets in contact with our more sensitive tissues in our throat, beyond the stronger tissues, the thicker tissues that are in our mouth and on our tongue, yeah, they are, what happens is it starts to burn the surface membrane of the skin. It irritates, and this is why when you get the burn, right, going down your throat when you're drinking whiskey, and you love that burn, when you wake up in the morning and the burn's still there, that's because your throat tissue is in a state of distress and irritation. That's what it is. Even when you're swallowing a whiskey, if you're getting excessive burn, then the whiskey's too strong. If you get hiccups on a regular basis, that is a reflex, subconscious reflex action of the body trying to cope with something which is not comfortable with. And that is high strength alcohol. High strength, I tell you what, if you can light it with a match, you cannot drink it. It's as simple as that. You need to dilute it down. You need to add water. And when you do, not only are you starting to remove the sting, the nip, the burn from the alcohol, you are reducing the ability for it to anaesthetize your palate. And that means that you're quite literally, you're tasting more of the flavour that's coming off the alcohol because the alcohol is weaker because it's weakened by the dilution and it's shedding the flavour. If the alcohol remains at cask strength, so does the flavour locked up in it. You're just not going to get it. Are you aware that master blenders, when they are assessing whiskies for 
making up blends and making up batches of single malts, are you aware that they reduce the strength to almost 20% alcohol? They add a huge amount of water because these guys can't waste a lot of time. These people are busy professionals. They can't nose and sniff all afternoon, you know, without time limits, hundreds and hundreds of different samples that they've been given. They've got to get through them. They've got to know what they're tasting fast. And the, the way they get access to the liquor is they dilute it significantly at least an hour before they even put their nose to the glass. Most of the research is done by their nose, but they will taste and then spit. Taste and spit. Nothing swallowed. Because see, when we get pished, inebriated and drunk, our objective sense is completely phased by the inebriation, by the intoxication, by being drunk. You can no longer properly assess the quality of smell, flavour, sensation and delivery and form of any whisky when you're no longer relatively sober. Now, notice I'm not saying completely sober because you do need maybe a whisky or two just to warm up the palate, just to get yourself into the zone but there comes a point after that it's not about volume of whiskey it's about the quality of smaller portions and you carefully add water and you don't add all the water at once i know i do but i'm doing a 20 minute review i'm in a hurry but i'm still trying to slow things down for you so i get out the very reliable internationally recognizable unit of measurement which is a teaspoon and it's five mils and I put in one teaspoon, two teaspoons and in this instance I put in three teaspoons to a high strength whiskey and the burn is gone. The nip is greatly subdued and the flavours are popping out because the alcohol's ability and strength to hold on and lock up and tighten and compress and compact that flavour is no longer there. It's got no choice to, but to release it. And this is why when whiskey is reduced from cask strength to 40% for blends and they do it all in the one, all in the one go rump, right? Yo. It was 60% rump, had 50% water, now it's at 40%. It shocks the whiskey and the whiskey never fully recovers. And because of that pre-dilution, that significant pre-dilution, Whiskies at 40% always have their true fullness of nature, fullness of flavour, fullness of character, destroyed. And in, in, I'm saying destroyed, I don't want to over the egg, egg, egg the pudding here, but significantly negatively impacted and it cannot be reversed. But still, it's a good place to start. We never start with cask strength whiskies. It's too much too soon. We need to learn, we need to gain experience and it needs to be personal because our palate is our palate and nobody else's. Other people guide us, but the real skill is the ability to guide ourselves. And it's not just about getting access to the flavor. It's knowing the risks of not managing your whiskey consumption. And it's not just about getting intoxicated on a regular basis. It's not about drinking every night. There's other risks, and I've highlighted one. High strength whiskey can result in accelerating throat cancer, especially if you smoke cigarettes. Also, if you smoke cigars, and because of the presence of the alcohol, you subconsciously start to inhale the cigar smoke. Very bad for you. Very, very bad. What can you do to alleviate the risk of throat cancer? Simples. Dilute your whiskey. Don't dilute it all at once. Dilute it incrementally and gradually till you hit your bliss spot and nobody else's. How will you know when you reach it? Because you, because you, it's your bliss spot, it's your bliss point, you will know. And you'll know particularly when you add too much water and you go a little bit too far. You will just learn about it.
So there you have it, malt mates. I hope you find this interesting, informative, educational, and of course, entertaining. I would conclude by saying that another serious help when consuming alcohol is to have that glass of water on standby. A glass of water should always be the constant companion of your whiskies, bourbons, rums, rice, whatever. When you have a sip of whiskey, you let it settle, you savour it, and then you rinse your palate with the water, and at the same time, you're rehydrating yourself, even as you dehydrate due to the presence of the alcohol. Now, sure, water's a solvent, but alcohol is a far greater solvent. Simple as that. Far more solventy than water, which is why they don't really mix. Which is why when you do add your water, you get the visimetry, the little swirls as it takes time to actually blend in together. Well, cheers, folks. I think I've covered enough information for now. I'll have more later. And I hope you've enjoyed this. You know, leave a comment. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And um, I've got more content on my Patreon channel. So there you have it. All mentioned. You have a good day now. And of course, keep your malt moments malty. Really enjoying this. Chock full of flavour. Becoming more resinous now. Never mentioned that in my review number 986. But delightfully, almost effervescently or champagne-like, could be the Moscatel casks, white grape, resinous, delicious. See you soon.